between rich and poor was never wider than in Tsarist Russia, the great landowning nobility. Their estates were sometimes as big as Connecticut or Massachusetts. Their gay and picturesque lives seemed to belong to an eternal scheme. The vast mass of the people lived in ignorance, toil, and extreme poverty. They began to march in groups, singing revolutionary songs, carrying banners, peace, bread, liberty. The czar's answer, I forbid all meetings in the streets. I warn the people that the soldiers have been instructed to use their rifles to restore order in the capital. You see here in the main thoroughfare of Petrograd the moving body of the power that overthrew the czarist autocracy and initiated those events which have altered the whole course of modern history. Stop the war. Confiscate the land. Russia belongs to the workers and peasants. All power to the Soviet. A civil war has to be ruthless, said Kolchak to his minister, Gin. I give orders to my officers to shoot all communist prisoners. Either we'll shoot them or they us. It was so in England in the Wars of the Roses. It must be so with us. The white officers stand guard while their aides remove the shoes of the Bolshevik prisoners. The red soldier laughs at death. The red soldier is still laughing. 